Hi, this is Pad Love with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Church of Love every Saturday. Some call it Sabbath. And we're going to read from Psalms 105. So I'd like you to turn with me to 105, starting with verse 1 through verse 11. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Tell ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O ye seed of Abraham of his of Abraham his servant. Ye children of Jacob, his chosen, he is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He hath remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying unto thee, I will give the land of Canaan the lot of your inheritance. Now, let me share a prophecy I got years ago. This is what came to my mind while I was reading this. Years ago, the Lord gave me a word that there's going to be a time of battle. And the battle, some may be in the natural because we know in the last days there'll be wars and rumors of wars. But a lot of the battle is going to be in the spirit. So we need to learn to fight. Mm -hmm. Read Ephesians chapter 6. I may refer to it later. Now what I want to share with you is this. The prophecy God gave me was that there's going to be a time of battle. All right. Now. During this time, there are going to be horrible things happening. It's going to be a scary time. It's going to be a shaky time, a time of shaking and quaking and all kind of stuff cutting loose. The crap hitting the fan. That's another way of saying that. But what God showed me is a vision of a scene in the movie Angels in the Outfield. And in this movie, this horrible team who couldn't catch a ball if you put it in their lap, they couldn't even hold on to a ball. The angel swoops down, this little boy, he sees the angel. The angel swoops down, picks the man up, takes him to where the ball is, because he was a mile away from it. He was not going to catch it. And he's flying through the air, and everybody's looking with wonder, right? And the ball, bam, lands right in his glove. Then the angel lands him down on the ground. Make sure he doesn't drop the ball. And they score. Now listen. What God told me when he reminded me of that scene was things are going to come easy for God's people during a hard time. Things will come easy. Things that we would normally have to wait for, pray hard for, battle for, struggle for. I mean, it will surprisingly come easy for us. God will make provision easy for us. Now, he also gave me another dream. And in this dream, we were riding in an old antique car. It was the modern day, but somebody just had one of those collection jobs, you know, people who collect cars. We were riding in their car, and we were riding in a back road. This was a back road out in the middle of the boonies. It was a 
an unpaved country road, a dirt road. And only the, only the residents knew about these secret roads in that area. Now, check this out. Battle had become so normal to us that it wasn't a surprise. Picture this. It's nighttime. There's five or six of us in this car. Some have bread, some have drink, some have ice, some have different things. Where we're headed is to another person's house. Listen to this. When we get to this other person's house, we haven't gotten there yet in the dream. But the purpose of going to this person's house is so that we can all pool our resources and break bread together. Now, in this dream, we're on the dirt road and we hear a boom. And we look off at the horizon to the left. And it was boom, boom. And it was, um, no, it was one boom, one boom, that's right. It was one boom, but it was two missiles that left the ground. They left the ground and we watched it, it was miles away. We watched it as it literally flew over our heads. We could see it up in the, up amid the stars almost. We could see it traveling. And we're looking to see where is it going. And we start praying, Lord, don't let it land where people live. Let it land somewhere where it won't hurt anybody's home, won't hurt anybody. Please, Lord, protect your people. So the thing is, is, is going across. And then miles away, you see the two bright lights, the explosion of the impact. And I was wondering why it was only one boom and two explosions. That's why I remember this. Somebody in the comments section of one of those videos I talked to, the, I talked about this. He said he called it a, a particular type of missile. It takes off, but it splits and lands in two different places. I guess it's to cover more territory. Now, we were talking about the the missiles. We were praying for people's protection when it landed that they would not be hurt. And we, as we realized, okay, now that's over with, we turned around, got back in the car, and now we're headed to this person's house, whoever they are. The atmosphere of the night was, we were all joyful. We were all full of God's peace. No one was afraid. There was no fear in this dream. We knew we were good. We knew God had us in this dream. Crazy, huh? Now, I'm, I want to read another scripture because what God is trying to say to us is even when hell is breaking loose, his covenant with, with his people stands strong. You don't have to worry about God scratching his head. Well, no. I don't know what I'm going to do. There's wars and rumors of wars. And what am I going to do with my people? I gave them a promise, but I don't know if I can follow through because there's so much going on. No, that's not what God is saying. He said, he confirmed the same unto Jacob, a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. Everlasting means never ending. The covenant stands, baby. His precious promises to you stand. When all else is falling out of whack, God's promises stand in your life. You hear me? Don't you dare sit there and start being full of fear. Don't you dare start being intimidated by the conditions of the day by the threats coming out of the darkness. No. God said in Isaiah 60, Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 60. And I want you to hear 
this. Don't you sit there and get afraid. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness, and the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Huh. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about and see. All oh, they gather themselves together, they come to thee. Thy son shall come from far, and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. The multitude of camels shall cover thee. The dromedaries of Midian and Epath and all they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense and they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. Now, I'm not going to keep reading on that. My point is provision is going to come from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south, from people you know, from people you don't know. Provision is going to come. And like I said, in that prophetic thing the Lord gave to me in my mind of remembering that scene, he gave that to me in the middle of a sermon at a church. And it just blew me away because I hadn't even planned on talking about the movie. That was weird. So for that to pop in my head, it lined right up with what I was already preaching. But that was the prophecy that there's going to come a time of trouble, but provision was going to come easy for God's people. And it's a time of battle. Let me not misquote that. He said a time of battle. So you guys can look at it as physical battle, as war, whatever. But I took it in the, in the thing as spiritual battle. Because the biggest battle, no matter what's going on around us, our biggest battle is always in the spirit realm. The battle of the mind, the battle of the heart, the battle of our flesh, the battle of our senses. We have to take authority even over our own reasoning so that we don't believe what we see. Like Peter, when he was in the ocean and Jesus said, come, and he walked on water and he started paying, taking his eyes off of Jesus who gave him the power to walk on water. He was walking on the word of Jesus, just like we will through this dark phase coming. And what ha happened was Peter took his eyes off of Jesus. Whoops, don't do that. Don't take your focus off the Lord. Don't, fo don't focus on the surroundings. Keep your eyes on him. Because that's when he began to sink, focusing in on the waves, the threat of the waves, the sound of the storm and the wind and how it rattled and shook him. And he got scared. It was fear that sunk him because he changed his focus. Be careful what you focus on going through these last days. Be careful. Then Jesus called him, raised him up. He's still faithful, even though he sunk in his own doubts and fears. Jesus raised him up on his word. And he said, why did you doubt? The only one that walked on water besides Jesus. Then he gets intimidated. What do I do? What do I do? What do I go? Oh, no. No, don't change your focus. He will keep you in perfect peace. If you keep your mind stayed on him, where's your mind? What are you focused on? What are you concentrating on? What are you meditating on? Huh? What are you contemplating? This is Psalms 106, just a few verses. Praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good for his mercy endureth forever. Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can show forth all its praise? Blessed are they that keep his judgment 
and he that doeth righteousness at all times. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor that thou bearest unto thy people. O oh, visit me with thy salvation, that I may see the good of thy chosen, that I may rejoice in the gladness of thy nation, that I may glory with thine inheritance. Hmm. See, <laughs> we're blessed when we're walking in his ways. We're not blessed because we're getting it all right and we're getting it all perfect because none of us are. We all fall short of the glory of God, but we're not living in that failure. We stumble over our own two feet. We stumble over our tongues. We stumble over our attitudes. We stumble over our emotions and our emotional scars, but we get up, dust ourselves off, repent, keep on stepping. It's not in the falling that, that, that makes you fail. It's in the not getting back up. So you have to persist. You have to pursue this thing with persistence. Then you must persist with perseverance, determination, aggression, the violent, take it by force. The Bible says the kingdom suffers violence. Suffer means allow. The kingdom suffers violence and the violence take it by force. You have to go after what's yours. God gave us precious promises now. We cannot afford to sit there and act like God is a liar because the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. So, I just want to share with you that no matter what goes on, God's got you covered. God's got me covered. There will still be good things happening in your life. There will. Stay focused and your stream will never run dry. Stay focused. Don't get so caught up. The Bible says in Psalms 91, what does that say there? A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand. But what does it say after that? It shall not come nigh, which means near thee. It shall not come near you. No evil shall befall you. Fear not. Your warfare is accomplished. God bless you. Stay encouraged. And if the Lord gives me anything to add to that after we take communion, I will add it. Okay, <clears throat> this is the part I'm going to add. There will be bad things happening. But you have to remember there is a mercy and a promise with God's people. The Bible says, death, where is thy sting? Grave, where is thy victory? Trust me, I honestly believe that for those who have to go to the guillotine and have their heads chopped off or their heads blown off by a, a rifle because they refuse to take the mark, the spirit will be gone from the body before the head feels, is able to feel that night, which means you won't feel any pain. You won't feel the sting of death. It'll be head in the, in the guillotine, down comes the, the uh, blade, and you're gone. You're in heaven. You didn't feel a thing. So either way, we have no reason to fear. But for right now, God wants to comfort his people. Fear not in the name of Jesus. You hear me? God bless you.